Well, hello, my name is Bart T and welcome to the My Saw Workshop. Today we're going to have a shop talk session. We're going to talk about sharpening plane blades or plane irons. Specifically, we're going to be sharpening the bevel up plane iron for this Veritas bevel up smoother plane. In today's session, we're actually going to cut a new primary bevel onto the plane iron. We're going to put the secondary bevel on there. We're going to shape the curve to make this a smoother plane so we don't get edge tracks. And then we're going to actually create what we call, it is now called the wear bevel by Chris Schwartz or the, the ruler trick. We're going to do all this using a 120, a 300, a 1000 diamond stones. We're going to use a 16,000 Shapton water stone. And we're going to finish up using green rouge on a leather strop. So let's get to that. So the most important thing you need to think about when you're trying to set up a way for you to sharpen anything, planes or chisels is generally what you're doing, is to have all your stuff together. Everything that you need to sharpen needs to be organized in an easy way for you to use it. So I have sort of copied everything that I've seen that I thought was good. The first thing I thought that was pretty good was Chris Schwartz, uh, Woodwork in America, I did a plane demo and he had a box. So he had a tray that looked something like this uh, to keep stuff in. So I made myself a tray. And originally I was using all Shafton stones to sharpen with. So pretty much everything I needed I could get into this tray. Well lately I've just graduated and decided I think the better way uh, for 1,000, what we call 1,000 grit stone and under is to use diamond stones instead of uh, water stones. And so now I've got a little bit more stuff. So just working my way over, the, my, my system includes, a, I keep a box of uh, towels here, or a roll of towels. I have a plastic shoe box. I love plastic shoe boxes. They keep you organized. So all my diamond pieces um, I can keep, and all those extra new parts I keep over in here so they get put away in, there in, in one box. Um, my horse butt strap uh, that I use green rouge on to do final sharpening uh, goes over in this box. So that's, that's kind of the big layout. In detail now, what I have is I use the Veritas Mark II sharpening system. Uh, it kind of has two parts. One is the, the thing that holds the, the blade and the other that it has the roller on it and sets the secondary the angles on it. Uh, now this comes with two different kinds of roller systems. One is this flat roller right here and you use this to set the, the flat grind on, on the blade and the other roller system this is a tapered roller system that, uh, that allows you to, to, to rock the blade a little bit and get your curves into your blade. The other part of that is a, a piece that sets the angle uh, here that and you have little numbers here and color systems uh, for you to set the angle with. And um, so what I've done on this is I'm working on a 35 I've actually it's a 38 degree blade, but I'm going to set it to 35 and then put a secondary angle on it, which will get me 36 or 37, and that's plenty close enough uh, to what, for what we need to do to have a smoother plane. Now when I use um, these diamond stones, I use the trend blue juice, as they call it. I'm not quite sure what's in here, but trend likes it so I figure it's good for any diamond stone and that's what I use to spray on here and give me a lubricant to lift off the particles somewhat. I have a DMT die sharp 120 micron which is a very rough stone. I use that from initial, an initial cut of the angle on the blade to get this, this flat. Once I get that cut all the way down and that's somewhat of a process then I'll go to the, the 300 surface on the trend, and the trend's a 300, 100, 1000, excuse me, and I'll, I'll smooth off the back. So once you get that done, 
then I can go to the 1000 side of the trend and do my basic shaping. When the basic shaping is finished, I go to a 16,000 grit stone here uh, for lubricant on that. I got a bottle here that says soap water on it. And that's a little bit of soapy water. That's a Ron's call, Rob Callsman trick that, that I learned from him. So that's the pieces and parts of the sharpening system that I use. Let's now go look and uh, start using these and, and putting things together. We begin by setting the honing jig using the angle jig, which has been set to 35 degrees on the red scale, and using a two and a quarter inch marking for the width of the blade. Once that is set, we can slide in the blade that we're going to sharpen the iron and uh, rest it against the stop point on the jig and make sure it's snug against the edge to make sure it's 90 degrees and tighten that down. You can see what this looks like with the angle jig in place from the other side. Notice the width is set at two and a quarter. Everything's snug and tight. So we can remove the angle jig now and be ready to start sharpening from what our starting point is. And this is what the blade looks like at this point. We're ready to take this now to our 120 grit diamond plate. And we're going to start real easily pulling this back and you can hear how loud that is, how, how heavy the grit is. So what we're really doing here is checking to make sure everything is lined up and you'll see in this close-up shot that you can see the evenness of the cut across the blade. So we're going to go back and keep on working on this and sharpening. I'm going in really in one direction at this point and then once I get enough done I can go uh, in both directions actually pushing, push, getting a sharpening on the push and pull which is where I'm, what's happening right there. That's not speeded up that much. So we're going to check the squareness of this. We're looking good. We're going to check the angle. We're looking good. We do a whole lot more when we get finished with the 120 grind and this is what the flat surface looks like. We remove the back burr from the 120 final work. And now we're ready to go to the 300 grit stone. And we're going to continue to hone it with 300 grit. And then we end up with a, something that's starting to look pretty nice and smooth here with the uh, final 300 grit flat grind. We'll remove the back burr from the 300 grind and then go to our 1000 stone to continue honing the surface to a, a 1000 grit, which is what I like to do. We're putting on some of the blue juice here. And then we're just going to work this uh, for a while and it doesn't take long. You can look at it and see it. We're going to move that back burr. So we've now got everything finished with the flat wheel. Okay, so you finished establishing the flat grind on your iron here. So you want to change from the flat roller over to the curved roller. You got all this set up and it's right, so there's no need to move that. All you got to do is to take off the roller and replace it with the other roller. It's going to give you the ability to, to rock that back and forth because you've got a round roller underneath here. And when I'm doing this, generally, I'm going to have this set either the first or second notch, depending on what I want a one or two secondary degree bevel. I'm changing from a two degree secondary bevel to a one degree bevel by twisting the knob here, which is on a spring set. And then I'm going to establish the one degree secondary bevel very carefully here. And notice the even pressure I've got across all my fingers to keep this blade exactly straight across. And then we're going to do that a few times. So here I've got my first stage of the one degree secondary bevel going exactly straight across. Now I'm putting two fingers on the right hand side and I'm going to take four cuts. One, two, three, four. And then again, one, two, three, four. And you always do this in even pairs. And then I'm going to do it one finger and really get a curve on the end of that blade. And then take the back burr off again on the 1000. So you can now see the curves on the end of the blade perfectly there. So now we're ready to go to the 16,000 shafted stones. The shafted stones have to be flattened 
And this is the flattening device for a shaft and stone that we use. Um, nice and white, so it's all flat and put some, spray some more soap water on it. Now notice what's going to happen here. You see that gray in the middle? That's because the, the blade is curved at this point, so you're not going to get any cutting on the edges of the blade, which shows you that you've done the job exactly the way you want it to do. That's the way it's going to cut the wood. Now I've got my fingers on the right side here, so you can see it cutting on the right side. You'll see the heavy gray line on the right side. And we're going to go to the, the left side here, and you'll see the same thing happening there. Uh, so we're actually honing this entire curve, and I'm going way out on the edge here, and I'm really picking up that edge curve that I had, doing the same thing on both sides. Now you can see the final 16,000 honing that we've done. Uh, you can see the curves on the end. And then we can remove the back burr that we created uh, while we're doing this honing on the curve line there. Next we're going to use the leather strop with green rouge polishing compound on it. We're going to continue to use the honing jig to hold the angles and be able to roll this, this curve over and uh, really get this honed to a real fine edge. Here's the plain iron after final honing on the leather strop with green rouge. As you can see, it's got a very highly polished final edge there. I think this does help uh, the sharpness of the edge and, and it's really easy to do. After reading the latest popular woodworking article by Chris Schwartz on block planes, bevel up block planes, and how to sharpen these, I decided to apply the ruler trick, or as what Chris has identified as the wear bevel on the back side of a bevel up plane. In the article, Chris states to use the final stone that you used for the back bevel. So this is a 16,000 shaft and I've got the ruler sitting here and you can see I'm starting to cut that edge. You can see that's a very, very small surface bevel on the end of the blade there. And we continue getting an edge on this as it's of course speeded up and we finally got our edge that we're satisfied with. Cleaning this up so we can see it. You can see on the back of the stone the marks left from removing the back burrs in the process of the 120, 300, and 1000 grit stones. This is really not acceptable and I'm really unhappy with this. The solutions to the problems with this uh, back bevel on the 16,000 stone is just to really flatten the back of the iron. I'm going to go back and do this uh, starting out with a 1000 grit stone and actually just flatten the back. Flatten the back is just a pretty simple process as you can see here. I'm just using a 1000 shafton and uh, I'm going to work the iron from both sides of this stone and we, should, we can end up with a flat back on this. You can see the result here on flattening the back on the 1000 and we've cleaned up all those uh, striation marks from the other grits and I believe we're in good shape now. So I've decided to actually put the back bevel or wear bevel uh, starting with the 1000 grit stone and get a much better surface and as you can see here we're basically doing the same thing and you can see how we're cutting uh, on this. Here you can see the nice even wear bevel edge after the 1000 stone. Next we're going to hone the wear bevel on the shaft and 16,000 stone. I have found that it's actually better to put the ruler down without the water first so that it sticks it seems better. And again you can see how much uh, we're cutting on the edge of that and we're actually honing on the 16,000 on the wear bevel to get a really nice surface here. You can see the results here of the 16,000 honing on this wear bevel. Uh, we've got a very even, nice, polished surface here. The final step is to uh, hone the wear bevel on the leather strop with the green rouge. Um, I'm trying to show you here what I'm doing is I'm pulling this almost flat and then slightly raising the blade up as I go backwards. Uh, the, it's not perfect, but I think we're getting a, a nice polish and we actually are polishing the final edge of this. Uh, in, in a way that will help. And finally I'm just going to go back to the main bevel here and uh, do a little stropping on that edge to pick up any burrs that we might have uh, created as we worked on this. And we're done. This is what the final hone looks like on the wear bevel. Uh, it's polished, it's clean, it's ready to use. Well there you have it. We've done all our sharpening. Let's see how this looks. Well, as you can see, I think it's working pretty well. Uh, I, I know that I cut myself when I was taking pictures of it, and, and uh, it, 
I barely touched the blade and I had a nice little slice across my finger. Uh, so yeah, it's sharp. I want to make something really clear here that every, everything in this video was shortened down to showing you the essence of what I was doing. Uh, when you're cutting that curve, I did four strokes on, one, on each one of those. You're going to have to look at the plane and see what it takes you to do that. Uh, it took me a lot longer to get that primary bevel on that thing than, than I'm showing because I had cut a lot of metal. The 120 did a great job doing that. Big thing I want to emphasize to you is just to keep looking at the blade. Uh, as those pictures I showed you, that's some pretty good examples of what you should end up with, I think. Uh, it works for me. So there we've got it. As always, I encourage you to go look at the MySaw.com website. There's a lot of things documented there about how I built my shop. Just check that little eye up there and uh, you'll, you'll see the website there. Also, I'd like for you to subscribe to this video channel. There'll be a lot more videos coming about my shop, shop tours, various pieces I've done in the shop. Just want to say thank you. Thank you for looking. Thank you for taking interest in what I do. Thanks.